When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. Ropepaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coatings solution. This is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, B.J. Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. Hey, greetings, Boise State fans. Welcome on in to Bronco Nation News Live, bronconationnews.com. It's a Tuesday edition presented by ropaint.com. We got Jay Tuss with us, sports director over at KTVB, fresh off of uh, sending Will Hall off into uh, his next venture. So uh, hopefully you're uh, fully recovered today, Jay. Yeah, we, uh, we're we doing okay. The, the, the tears have dried, and uh, we're just going to we're just gonna be forced to move forward, right? What else can we do? Yeah, I was glad we were able to uh, pull him on uh, one of those days uh, on one of the shows uh, last minute. He's uh, you won't find a nicer guy than Will Hall, so we wish him the best of luck. I I uh, tweeted it, but I, I mean it. I've never heard him say a bad thing about anybody, and I've never heard anybody say a bad thing about him. So uh, yeah. he, he was. Well, we just uh, make sure we we just made sure you couldn't hear us, BJ. Probably probably smart. Yeah. <laughs> I assumed I assumed I assumed I am one hundred. I assumed that I, I assumed that, but I was just going to move on. No, you're exactly. I worked with the guy for eight years, and I can on, or almost eight years, and I can honestly say that you're 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 absolutely spot on with that. Never heard him say a bad thing about anybody. He's just a he's a good dude with a bright future, and we're gonna miss him, no doubt. Best of luck to Will moving forward. Uh, I know you guys are excited about uh, moving forward too with his yeah. replacement. Well, I'm sure we'll hear about that at some point here in the near future. We were a couple minutes late because Jay and I were just catching up like we usually do. But somebody bl- put the uh, blame on waiting for Jay to hit the breakfast bar again. Uh, in Vegas, in Vegas, hey, okay, chill, bro. In Vegas, they were uh, saying, you know, oh, JD Price says I'm usually a patient person. V. I don't know if you saw the email I posted yesterday of some guy uh, ripping us for the audio issues the first five minutes of the first show. Um, he said he was a patient person, and then went on to uh, rip uh, and saying it's unacceptable to have that. So uh, that's just how it goes, I guess. You like you get the hate email uh, every now and then, but whatever. I know I just. I think you can you can easily judge whether it's worth your time or not, and if it isn't, then there's a delete button. Yeah, it's, it is pretty quick. Uh, we got a good show today. We appreciate uh, RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, our title sponsor here at Bronco Nation News. Check out their uh, concrete coating, four times stronger than epoxy. If you're looking to uh, get that new concrete coating on your garage, on your back patio, um, it is uh, it's awesome. It's game changing. I've done it myself twice. So check it out, RowPaint. Dot com. We got a lot of news and notes here we want to get to. We got some leftover stuff from media days. I did just see it cu- cr- come across the wire, Jay, that uh, Jeremy McNichols has signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So how many teams is that now that he's technically been with? Oh, my gosh. We got to be upwards of almost double digits. I'd say eight. Um, kind of a guess off the top of my head, but uh, prob- probably eight-ish. That's kind of the life of, you know, his, his role in the NFL. He's He is very good and very elite at what he does, but – the NFL, is, it's the cream of the crop, man. So um, he's kind of had to bounce around just a little bit. But we'll see. Maybe he can stick with the Steelers. Who knows? So Jeremy McNichols signs, at least for now, will go into training camp with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We are uh, – NFL camps are underway, Jay, but we are eight days from the start of the first Boise State football practice. A week from tomorrow will be the first yeah. practice of fall camp. We'll find, on Monday, uh, we'll get to meet with uh, Coach Avalos, the coordinators, the assistant coaches. I like, by the way, how they broke up the coordinators and the assistant coaches. So we get times with each of the coordinators, and then we get a little uh, you know, one-on-one time with the other uh, coaches uh, as well. So that'll be Monday. You'll get your full fix of uh, BSU uh, coaches uh, media day before the first practice on Wednesday. Eight days, Jay. I was trying to think about this. Number eight, number eight, eight days away. Who, who would you say, maybe some fans can comment as well, the best number eight in Boise State uh, football history 
Uh, Demarcus Lawrence is the first one that comes to mind for me. But uh, fans, let us know what you think. Number eight, who's the best number eight in Boise State football history as we are now eight days away from the start of fall camp? You know, we did this uh, – we kind of did a, had fun with this a couple years ago. And it's so funny because you have an idea like this and it's good at the time. And you're like, well, we have to put that on the, the back burner for a while. Um, but it, it's probably relevant to bring back again because it, it, it has been a couple years. But I would almost argue that the number eight might be the best number in Boise State history when you look at, like, you know, who, who's worn that number, right? Like you mentioned Demarcus Lawrence, but you go back Orlando Scandrick, George Iloka, Kamale Correa, Jabril Frazier. Um Man, that's some that's some big time talent that has is, is rocked the number eight over those years. Number two's been a, a really good number for Boise State. Austin Pettis, Matt Miller, Gerald Alexander wore it back in the obviously Khalil Shakir. Um, yeah, but number eight's a it's that, that number has been a good number for uh, for Boise State football. And by the Markel, way, Markel Reed's wearing it right now, right? That's yeah. right. Yep. And by the way, I was told that uh, they have the new Khalil Jer- Khalil Shakir jerseys in at the Pro Image Blue and Orange store there at the uh, Boise Town Square Mall. One of our uh, great sponsors here at Bronco Nation News. I think John Mallory was telling me about that. But if you head over are to they, the the Blue and Orange there? store, they're the white ones, I believe. Um, I'm not sure which colors, but they're the uh, Khalil Shakir Buffalo Bills jerseys. That's not an answer. Uh, are we talking Bills or Broncos? Yeah, okay. we're talking Buffalo Bills jerseys over at the Blue and Orange store. So go over to uh, Pro Image, the Boise Town Square Mall there, uh, right in Boise, and another great sponsor of ours. And I'm told the Khalil Shakir jerseys are in, and they look clean from what I'm told. So if you're, you know, he's he's been off to a nice start in training camp. It sounds like as well. You know. Which we which shouldn't surprise any of us. It doesn't, and I, I, you know, I almost replied to a tweet yesterday saying f- fifth round draft pick with the laughing emoji, just because it's it's funny to me. I I know that not every Boise State prospect has hit going into the NFL, but if I've ever been confident about one, I'm pretty confident that Khalil Shakir is going to be the dude that that um, makes it work and goes big time. And uh, so far, he's seemingly. Uh, transitioning to the NFL uh, effortlessly, as, as we probably all would have predicted with Khalil. So cool to see. And um, despite the fact that these NFL, you know, uh, front offices have the brightest minds in the world, I, I have a very strong feeling there's going to be some people that regretted not taking Khalil Shakir higher than, than the fifth round. No doubt. We got some uh, folks chiming in. George Iloka. Uh, he says, uh, Rudy says, only because he was with us for four years. Uh, George is a baller, too, man. Scandrick also wore number eight. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I think the uh, number one here, Zach Price says, it's got to be Nick Patty. The greatest there it Bronco. is. You know, I mean, probably going to go undefeated as the Broncos starting quarterback. Now that I think about it, he never lost a game as the Broncos starting quarterback. I mean, so he's got a little bragging rights over Kellen Moore right there, as we all predicted when he signed out of Florida. How about that? Hey, we are going to talk some uh, football. We got some clips from Andy Avalos, but I do want to mention a little bit of basketball news. They will announce today the uh, Myrtle Beach Invitational Bracket. John Rothstein had tweeted it out, and then I got it confirmed. And I guess there's a little bit of confusion because I was told Boise State in the second round, the matchups look a little different. But uh, all you need to know is the first round, Boise State's going to play Charlotte. And it looks like, Jay, Boise State, you know, they don't they don't seed the teams like publicly, but it looks like Boise State got the number two seed in this tournament, uh, and they're uh, playing uh, Charlotte in the first round of the Myrtle Beach Invitational. That'll be an ESPN televised game, I believe, uh, on November 17th. And then they'll get either uh, Loyola, Chicago, or Tulsa. Loyola, Chicago finished 29th at Ken Palm last year in mm-hmm. the second round. So you get a chance at a quality second-round game. And then potentially in the championship, you could play either Texas A&M or Colorado. It's funny, Boise State had asked first to not be on the same side as Colorado because they didn't want to play, you know, their friends, uh, Tad Boyle, to the championship. And then they've got the extra game schedule with Texas A&M, uh, you know, as a non-conference game on December 3rd down in uh, Fort Worth. So they say they switched it and said, "Can we? okay, well, if we have to play Colorado, we will, but we'd rather not play Texas A&M. Well, now they got lucky, and both of them are on the opposite side of the bracket. So uh, shapes up kind of nice. Uh, Myrtle Beach is a nice preseason tournament. Get your games on television and a chance for uh, Boise State to pick up some uh, early season wins. Yeah, those are neutral court wins. So anybody in the top fifty will will slide into that quad one, um, you know, uh, potential spot for Boise State. But yeah, Colorado, uh, Murray State's ran out some good squads recently over the years. Texas A and M was one of the hottest teams in the country to to wrap up last season. Um, obviously, Loyal Chicago's done some big things recently. Tulsa has had some good teams out of Conference USA. So yeah, that, that's a good tournament. It'll be uh it'll be fun to see. 
I, I want to play a video here in a second, Jay, because we both did stories on uh, Riley Smith, and Riley Smith has the uh, NIL deal right with uh, Lithia Ford. Yeah. What I, I you did the story on it first. Um, maybe while I'm getting the video ready to play, maybe you can just remind folks about his deal and how he got a new car and what came what came from that. And that was pretty cool. It was one of the first ones where Boise State worked with the student athlete, and he was yeah. able to actually be in his Boise State gear, which we're going to see here in a second. Yeah, it was uh, completely unique. Um, you know, we can't confirm this, but likely the first NIL deal of its kind in, in, in the country. Um, and that was the fact that the way that it worked out with Boise State's in, in-house NIL infrastructure, they were allowed for this co-branded opportunity where um, Riley shot a commercial on the blue, rocking his Boise State gear, Boise State logo, all that stuff. And uh, the, the power to bring a sponsor, a player, and the university all together, um, that, that's just unique. You don't see that very often. A reason why, um, you have to be, for Boise State, for example, you have to be a major sponsor of the university. It's a, it's a pretty short list of 15, maybe 20 or so sponsors that can uh, utilize these co-branded opportunities. And so it's just something that was really unique. And, and Riley himself, man, I mean, we know Riley, Riley's a very good player. Very good player, but he's not, you know, the starting quarterback. He's not on all these preseason watch lists. Like, he's not the most glorified player on the team by any means. But he went out, man, rolled up his sleeves. He's, he's kind of a savvy business dude uh, and worked with Mike Walsh and Lithia, and they, they got something done to where it was just a really unique, cool opportunity for Lithia Ford, Boise State, and for Riley Smith, most importantly. Well, Lithia Ford, Jim Sterk, uh, big supporters of Bronco Nation News. We appreciate that. As I've said, I'm going to be purchasing a vehicle from them uh, in the near future because my truck is uh, going bad. I have not seen oh, this. I it, yeah, I don't I, I don't know yet. Maybe maybe a truck. We'll see. Uh, my wife wants the Bronco. She says Bronco Nation News should have a Bronco, but I, I don't know if that's quite in our price range. Um, but uh, you never know. If there would be a place to get it, it would be Lithia Ford. I have not seen this yet, Jay, but Lithia Ford did send over four of the new updated commercials that will be starting on TV with Riley Smith. I thought we could play one of them, A, to uh, give a shout-out to Lithia Ford, but B, just to uh, check it out. I don't think the formatting is correct. I think this is more of a square kind of Instagram format, so we'll see what it looks like here. But this is at least one of the new commercials that you'll soon be seeing on TV with Riley Smith for Lithia Ford. Oh, the gym. Old stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now, nah, the kicker's probably taller and in a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. <laughs> Well, there's one of the uh, commercials you'll be seeing. There was a, they, and that was the cool part. They could be shot with him wearing Boise State gear out on the blue, and uh, that's pretty cool. And he got a, uh, I believe, a one-year lease of a use of an F-150 out of it. Yeah. So uh, cool for Riley, and you'll start to see those on TV. And they're going to do a marketing campaign around fall camp, and we'll be playing those uh, on the show here as well. But uh, yeah, go check out Lithia Ford, as Riley Smith says there, and make sure your next uh, purchase is through them. Yeah, no, it was fun. And I, I got to say, I was actually there for some of the commercial shoot. Riley was like a one-take wonder, dude. Like, he got it done. He was he was dialed. So, and I'm, I'm just, I don't mean full transparency. That wasn't the case for everybody in the commercials. Riley, Riley had it. Riley was dialed, man. And good for him. Yeah, we saw it, uh, it's a pretty cool opportunity for him. So, yeah, check out Lithia Ford and be on the lookout for those commercials here moving forward. Before we get to some Andy Avalos clips, you want to tell you about a couple of our other great sponsors, Transportation Compliance Service. Check them out, transcomservice.com. If you're looking to uh, find a new career change, a fresh start, how about becoming a truck driver? Transcom Service can help you every step of the way. All the permits, all the things you need can help you out there getting that towing, that first load in no time. They're a local company based in Meridian, but they help folks all around the world. So check them out, transcomservice.com. United Commercial Insurance, I cannot tell you from experience as a client of United Commercial Insurance how easy it is. Uh, we uh, got some business insurance for Bronco Nation News through them recently, and Every step of the way, it was easy. They were very helpful. We did it mostly through email in a couple days, and we were rocking and rolling with our insurance policy. So check them out, unitedcommercialinsurance.com. 
A quick five-minute call could save you hundreds of dollars on your uh, business insurance. Uh, and again, 44 states around the country, they can write policies. So even if you're a business owner not in Idaho, they can pretty much help you out anywhere in the country. So check them out, unitedcommercialinsurance.com. And Boise Dentistry Co. as well. Check them out. Locations across the Treasure Valley, full family dentistry. So uh, your kids, your wife, yourself, aunts, uncles, grandparents, whoever, head over to Boise Dentistry Co. And they can take care of you. Dr. Chris Miner there does a tremendous job. And uh, makes going to the dentist fun. So check them out. Find a location near you, BoiseDentistryCo.com. We had some leftover kind of news and notes um, from uh, Media Days, Jay. And one of the things that stuck out to me was I asked uh, Andy Avalos about the running back depth. I, I do not agree with with Andy Avalos. I'm not sure where you come in on this, but I, I'm a little concerned about the running back depth that Boise State has. Um, I thought they might do a little more. There's a little feedback, by the way, Jay. I don't know if maybe when you're not talking, you can either mute for temporarily or I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, um, it, I, I thought they would do more, Jay. I really thought they'd find somebody in the transfer portal. You lose Habibi Likio. You lose uh, Andrew Van Buren. You know, George Helani has missed at least three games in each of the last two seasons. It, you know, I like Tyler Crow. I think he's going to have a role in this team and be good. I'm not sure I want Tyler Crow with 25 carries a game. Um, you know, don't, no disrespect to him or anybody else. Same with Ashton Genty. He may be ready. He may be the George Shalani of freshman year of a couple years ago that comes in and rushes for a thousand yards. We just haven't seen it. Um, and then take Juan Tyler again, at times has shown some things, but he's a Juco guy battles some injuries. I don't know if he's ready to carry the load. They're banking a lot on George Shalani staying healthy and it's just going to be very interesting. But I guess before we play the clip, what, what is your thought on the running back depth this year for Boise state? Um, I mean, more is probably always better, right? Um, but sometimes with these these running backs that come out of the transfer portal, like Cyrus Abibi Likio, I mean, what a what an awesome character, great story, um, great dude to have in the locker room. But I don't know how much of like a, a game changer he truly was, right? Like if you get a guy like him out of the transfer portal, is that better than giving Ashton Genty more opportunities? Is that better than, you know, maybe uh, taking opportunities away from Tyler Crow? Um, I, I just don't, I don't know the answers to that. I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, obviously I think what this means though, is that the coaching staff has a great, great amount of confidence in a guy like Ashton Genty to at least not maybe be the starting running back, but, to play a role if he needs to this year because he got here early. He went through spring ball. The coaches raved about him and they must feel comfortable with him because if not, I think you might've seen them dip back into the transfer portal. So uh, this is also an interesting time BJ in the sense that if you go get somebody out of the transfer portal, that's an upperclassman, do you lose two younger, you know, running backs that are underclassmen. And then all of a sudden you really, rock your depth chart next year and moving forward down the line where you got to go out and get like a, just a, a bunch of people. So, um, yeah, I think that, uh, that, that's, that's, you know, that's just kind of a, an interesting balance you have to add. Cause if you brought in a senior, maybe, does Ashton Genty still come to Boise state? If he doesn't maybe get an opportunity this year, I, they're all valid questions. Yeah, so I asked Andy Avalos at Media Days about you know whether or not he was concerned with the lack of depth at running back. Uh, hint, he says no. And then I asked him what that said. Does that mean in fall camp you basically need to have George Helani in bubble wrap to make sure he's ready to go against Oregon State? Uh, here's Andy Avalos on the uh, Boise State running back depth, which he feels pretty good about. There's four guys that you know are going to be in the mix. That's pretty typical. And then there's two freshmen that are coming in. Um, so we got six guys total. Um, we, uh, with uh, George, obviously, that's the, the biggest thing is to make sure that we, you know, we maintain and keep George because George is a violent runner and George is very physical. And so making sure that George understands, like, it's imperative that we get to game day and we're ready to go and then building the depth in behind. You know, it's, it's time for, you know, Ashton Genty, um, Tyler Crow, and Taekwon. They need to go. I mean, that's four backs right there plain and simple um and to be able to have two freshmen that just obviously joined the team um we feel pretty pretty good about that it obviously i mean it just looks different when george is out there I mean, for, for reasons yeah. what he's done I mean, is that do you take that into consideration fall camp and stuff limiting reps or live tackles or i mean is this his next the next time he gets tackled is that going to be against oregon state I mean, how, how do you make sure he's 100 yeah, percent for that I, I think season you guys saw that in, in the spring right when you guys are out there have we all seen what george can do 
have y'all seen that George can break tackles and George can make people miss? You know what I'm saying? So uh, some of those other guys need those opportunities in life situations way more than George does, you know, and so that they can get used to that. So it's, it's kind of twofold. And I don't, I don't think that anybody by any means, because George does everything else. And when George practices, he is violent when it's time to get in there and do it. So um, that's an opportunity to make sure that uh, George is ready to roll. And it's an opportunity for all these other guys that we're talking about. Like, that's how we build the depth is let them have more of that. Your reaction to that, Jay Tuss? In talking with uh, some players down at, at Mountain West Media Days about George, um, you know, he, Andy said a number of times in that clip, George is violent when he runs. And if you again, you talk about some of his his, uh, his opponents around the league, they would absolutely agree with you. Caden McDonald, star linebacker at San Diego State, like immediately was like, George is one of the best running backs in the conference, no doubt. Um, another guy that I talked to down there jokingly said, it, and when you go tackle George Alani, you better pack a lunch because it, it, it's going to be a long day if you have to do that over and over and over again, just because of how good he is once he makes contact and his ability to continue to drive his legs. Um, yeah, they, they got to put him in bubble wrap. I mean, I, I don't think you, you – you never question George's uh, determination, his toughness, anything like that. So I don't know how, how often you necessarily need to see him in full contact in practice. I'd expect a couple of times just because he needs to feel that. But, yeah, you, you save that dude till game day. And I think, like, even back in the day with the Jeremy McNichols and Jay Ajay and stuff, once those guys' workload got so high – it, it was probably very similar for them. They were probably doing very, very little contact stuff midweek. Okay, bro, chill, chime in. I'd like to see Tyler Crow break out and be better than Andrew Van Buren at least. J.D. Price, I agree that uh, Crow needs more reps. Um, you know, again, I, I think Crow's yeah. going to have a role. I think he's probably going to be the maybe the goal line type guy, although I will say this. I know Prater said this. Let's let George Jelani – you know, get in the end zone. Like he had one touchdown last year, I believe. Right, Jay? I mean, like I, I get you want to have other guys involved and have roles for guys, but like there's no reason George Jelani needs to get you all the way down the field. And then when you get to the two yard line, hand it off to somebody else. Let, let's, I yeah. think this, I think George Jelani needs to get 10 plus touchdowns this year. Yeah. I think that um, you, you're going to kind of gauge that. Cause you know, once you get inside the one, two yard line down by the goal line, I mean, we are talking about everybody knows what everybody's doing. And it is just a physical onslaught. And so if you can protect Georgia a little bit from some of that wear and tear because you're only trying to gain a yard, despite the fact that yard could mean six points, if Tyler Crow is really good at gaining a yard, maybe you do give him more carries. I will say this, though. I do definitely agree with that to a certain degree because back when Jeremy McNichols and Jay Ajay were, you know, leading this offense and um, you felt like they were two of the most dangerous players really in America – they were scoring a lot of touchdowns. They were elite inside, not just the, the red zone, but we're talking about the high red zone or, you know, inside the five, whatever it might be. So, um, yeah, I, I think that um, it would be cool to see him get a, a few more carries closer to, to the goal line if he can stay healthy and all that stuff. But, you know, somebody brings up like Tyler Crow and Andrew Van Buren, and, and that's probably a decent role comparison moving forward. I think that that – that's definitely a place that, that Boise State might be able to improve even a little bit. Like, Andrew was good near the goal line, didn't offer you a ton outside of that. And some of Tyler Crow's few limited opportunities, he has had some between the 40 runs. And, you know, he, he's broken off a six, seven, eight yarder at times. And so um, he had the touchdown last year at Fresno. I, I just think that that's an area where – Boise State might be able to, to get a little bit better because I think that I think that Tyler Crow has definitely has some stuff to offer this, this Boise State offense. Not necessarily in the George Helani capacity, but more so than maybe even the Andrew Van Buren last year capacity. Who do you see as the number two back? <sighs> Great question. I mean, if you want to go with a similar skill set or one that mimics George Helani, then you're again you're you're probably looking at the true freshman Ashton Genty. Um, if you're looking about who's going to be the second guy on the field, it, it very well might, might be Tyler Crow, though, just because he, he's going to play a specific role. And he brought up Ty, um, Tyquan Tyler in that tip and uh, in that clip. And I, I am like really interested to see him because you see him on the field at practice, some of his limited opportunities. I don't know exactly what's holding him back because he, he really looks like 
he has the skill set that, that could offer Boise State something. And so there's some there's some depth of what he brings to the table that I don't really know that, that might be kind of limiting his opportunity at the moment. Um, but he certainly seems like a, a low center of gravity guy, thick legs, can catch the ball. Uh, just, just eager to see if he can put it together because he might be the difference maker when it comes to depth in the running back room. If he can have a good year, then that, that room looks a lot different. And I know his dad is an avid uh, listener of the show, so we appreciate that if he's watching today. But, I mean, the real the real comment here from OK Bro Chill, George can back up George, and then third can be Crow, and fourth can be Genty. <laughs> George can back up George. Hey, when, man, when J.H.I. Jai was here, J.H.I. Jai was backing up J.H.I., Jai, and then J.H.I. Jai was also backing up J.H.I.'s Jai backup. So, I mean, that guy got so much work when he when he was here, and, and he hated – coming off the field like he just he, re, he often refused to come off the field yeah if you hear well, some backstories from these coaches we'll see and they feel good about it i mean i i feel good about it if you say george Shalani plays 12 games but uh, i just i feel like they could have used one more depth guy to, to help out there I mean, which is ironically an andrew van buren type guy he could yeah. have had a big role in this team right. if he had stayed and now he goes to portland state and obviously mm-hmm. wish him the best of luck i don't know if he thought his stock would be higher when he hit the portal than it ended up being or if he mm. thought a Portland State type thing where he could be the lead back is what he was going to get, yeah. but uh, I just, I mean, I, you know, I hope it works out for him. I would just, I'm a little nervous for them in terms of the running back depth going yeah. into the season. Again, I, I just think it's a new era, BJ. Like if you just had the transfer portal that you could benefit from and not had to worry about guys, you know, leaving immediately, it's it's just different. Because I, I think if you, again, if you go hit that thing. Maybe it affects who you can recruit to that position the upcoming year. Maybe you lose some younger running backs. And Andy, you know, he's got to work on this roster, man. He, he really has kind of quietly where he truly is trying to space out talent, um, you know, classification. Like he doesn't want, you know, four or five, you know, seniors at linebacker. And then you just have four or five true freshmen at linebacker. Like you have to fill in the gaps in between. And right now, if you do look at the running back position, they at least have staggered it out a little bit um, over the next couple of years. So if if it was if you didn't have to worry about losing anybody, yeah, I think you hit the transfer portal again and try to get somebody there. But I, I just there, there's more to consider in this day and age. And so I think that's probably maybe playing into the, their decision to stand pat. And the fact maybe they just feel very, very confident to take one Tyler. Or, well, take on Tyler, but also uh, yeah, Ashton Genty. Hey, I want to hear one more quote from Andy Avalos before we get out of here. But first, I want to tell you about Ridley's Family Markets, shopridleys.com. 13 Idaho locations. Check them out. Uh, they uh, just do great stuff. They've got the home delivery, the, the uh, at-home shopping, the Skip app, all that great stuff. And where they're big supporters of Bronco Nation News, uh, please check them out. Support them at shopridleys.com. Boucher Real Estate, the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. Check them out, boucherrealestate.com. No home is too big or too small for Matt Boucher, so check them out at Boucher Real Estate. And, uh, you know, probably done playing for the season, Jay, but uh, myself with practice starting. But if folks are wanting to get out on the course, uh, been great weather. Uh, in Boise, uh, playtimberstone.com is the website for Timberstone Golf Course to book that tee time. Kelly and Tad do a tremendous job out there, so check them out. Playtimberstone.com. Book your tee time. The best greens in the valley, and uh, you may find a few J. Tusk golf balls over in the rough somewhere out at uh, Timberstone Golf Course, but uh, you liked that course, didn't you? You had fun out there. Yeah, that course is awesome. Uh, I, I Honestly, it was one of my – It's. It's one of my favorite courses around. It's a little far, but let's get over that argument because we all know it. Uh, in terms of just the course itself, it's beautiful, pretty open. Um, the greens were in impeccable shape when we played out there. So, I, yeah, that course, I had an awesome time out there. One of my favorite courses in the Valley for sure. Do you believe uh, James Ferguson Reynolds will be the punter on the first punt against Oregon State? Man, I'm, I would honestly almost be a little surprised if it's not, but um, – that's kind of one area where we don't see a lot of like live special teams play during spring ball. So I don't know if I can honestly like have like the most accurate, I guess on that, but I, I, I would be a little surprised if he's not. Here's a quick 30 second clip of Andy Avalos at media days talking about James Ferguson Reynolds. You know, he is able, he's really precise with the football. I'll just tell you that much. I mean, it's like a baseball pitcher in terms of him being able to hit the inside of the plate, the outside of the plate, like where he can punt this thing, the different things. So that's pretty fun to see. Um, but you know what? Um, Will Will's done an unbelievable job too. He's been extremely um, productive in terms of um, his hang time, his distance, and his placement as well. It's going to be a fun competition to see. 
That does get you kind of excited when you hear about the pinpoint accuracy and some of the things that an Aussie punter can do. Um, I, you know, they'll battle that out during camp. That is one of the battles to watch. I know it's not a sexy position battle like a quarterback or something to see who's going to be the punter. Um, but, um, you know, Gavin Whale has uh, kind of waited the last couple of years for this opportunity. Um, but they, you know, you don't go to Australia and I don't think they actually went to Australia, but I mean, you don't recruit a guy from Australia if you don't see him potentially having a, a big role right, right away. And, and I think that is going to be interesting to see what happens there. Yeah. It, uh, like I said, I, I, we haven't just seen enough of the punting situation in no quite yet. Like, I don't know how often we've seen or how many times we've seen, um, him kick in practice. Like it few and far between. It just, it, we just don't get to see that too much. I remember seeing Jonah Dalmas kick field goals during the spring, but not a whole lot of punting and certainly not live punting that we got that we got the chance to witness. So I just you just kind of hear some of the things. It seems like they're very very high on him, and I would be a little a little surprised. And we see what kind of difference, man. Like a good punter makes a massive difference these days. Ryan Stonehouse at Colorado State, uh, Matt Ariza over at San Diego State last year, who probably could have like got votes for Conference Player of the Year, like not just his special teams, but well, I don't know, defense or offense, wherever the heck you put him at. He was a game changer in terms of flipping field position, pinning opponents in the five. And, if, if, I mean, if you have a punter that not only can can bomb punts, but is really good at killing the ball inside the five, the, the chances of an, of an opposing offense going on a 95-plus yard drive is like slim to none. So if, if you can find a way to flip field position in that capacity – you make your defense a whole lot better. I think we found the answer, though, Jay. We're not punting against Oregon State. Kurt. Boom. Kurt what up, Kurt? <laughs> uh, Joseph Gregory, go Broncos from Alabama. Appreciate you. And as we wrap it up here, big Wade, I was right there with you. He said, considering his golf game, the uh, golf carts were not allowed to go as far out of play as where his ball was. They were getting shut off, so they may not be able to uh... – <laughs> I know all about that, Big Wade. We did. We did run into that. I don't know. They must have known the cart that I was driving because I was not limited to going at OB. But uh, the the group that we played with at, your, at the tournament you put on, BJ, they like hit a hit a point and the car died. <laughs> or their, yeah, their they, car have, died. they have a uh, they're, they're like a GPS signal, and if you go yeah. too far off the track, it'll shut you down. One time I was playing. Uh, this is how horrible it was. Uh, but I, I called because it just stopped working, and I said, "Hey, I think my car's out of gas." And they said, well, first of all, it's electric. It's yeah. not gas. They said, second of all, our computer says you have 74%. Where are you? And I said, oh, we're over on hole seven. Over, He goes, are you in the rough? I said, yeah. He goes, okay, well, you must have hit it, you know, pretty bad because it shuts off the cart when you get out. It's basically, you know, it's you know, it's like the, the call of shame or whatever. Where you're calling yeah. to tell them your shot was so bad that they shut off your golf cart. But we just turned around and backed it up into the fairway, and then it started working again. So that's about where my golf game is at. But uh Get out to get out to uh, Timberstone. You'll have fun out there. Jay, appreciate your time, man. Yeah. Um, we'll do it again on Friday. We do need to uh, – we'll have a uh, – I haven't seen the fall camp schedule yet, but just a uh, note for fans. I think we may have to switch up the time on this thing if uh, fall camp practices are in the morning. So we'll have to talk, Jay, about a uh, time that works for you and Johnny and Prater. Hopefully that we can all settle on a time. Uh, but I don't know how much of practice we're going to get to watch this uh, during fall camp, but this may uh, – Fall camp may throw a little wrinkle on it, but it'll all work out because we'll have extra coverage and things to talk about, and it's going to be fun. But uh, appreciate your time, man. Uh, hope you can enjoy. I know you got to work, but enjoy these last couple of days a little bit before uh, the grind gets going for us on uh, on Monday, really, with fall camp. You bet, bud. There he is, Jay Tusk, KTVB Sports Director. You can watch him on all the different newscasts, KTVB. Check him out, ktvb.com. Make sure to follow their YouTube channel as well. We're slightly behind them. We just got over 1,000. We're catching up, I think, to the KTVB YouTube channel slowly but surely, but uh, we're coming for you. But, uh, Jay, appreciate it. Appreciate all you guys for checking us out, all the comments. Make sure to, again, subscribe and uh, like us on the YouTube channel. Check out bronconationnews.com. We'll be back tomorrow morning. David Motes, by the way, congratulations to him. We didn't talk about it, but he will join me on tomorrow's show. We'll catch up with David Motes tomorrow about uh, his new role as the director of recruiting with the basketball team. So check that out, 9 a.m. tomorrow. If news breaks, we'll be back sooner. Otherwise, have a great day, folks. We'll talk to you later. Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com.